Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for another zero hour video and this time we will be talking about the three most popular mistakes I see players make when defending in PvP. Some of the typical mistakes I am going to be talking about in this video are either made because of players decisions or because of the poor understanding of some of the game's features. Now remember that zero hour is still in early access and while it definitely is already a great game given its development stage and the price point, some of the features obviously still need to be reworked or improved in the future as we get closer to version 1.0. So why are those mistakes made in the first place? While some of the game's features are not explained or surfaced properly to the players, but hopefully you will better understand them after watching this video and avoid making the same common mistakes that I often see in PvP. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 1. Not changing the objective location. This is something that a lot of new players don't know or understand properly, but you can change the location of your objective when defending in Zero Hour. This is extremely important when playing Bomb, since you cannot relocate the objective to a different place like you can when you're playing Hostage. And some locations are easier than others to defend, and you obviously want to pick the one that are the easiest to defend, or the one that you have a lot of defending tactics for, so that you can score as many victories as you can in the three rounds you are defending. Otherwise, the game will keep choosing the same objective location by default over and over again until you switch sides. That will usually be the first one from the list of locations and sometimes it's actually the most difficult location to defend. So let's go over the basics for a bit. When and where do you choose the objective location? That is done during the loadout phase and you will have the list of locations on the left side of the screen. Just bear in mind that the list of objective location is also the list of locations where you will spawn on the map at the beginning of the round. How do you choose the objective location? It works a bit like a voting system. To explain it simply, the most popular location basically gets used in your upcoming round, and you need enough people to click on that location from the list for the game to select it. You can see how many people have selected a location next to the name and the most popular choice that will be used as the next objective location will have a crown next to its name as well. Some locations are greyed out. Sometimes you will see locations greyed out or you cannot select them and that's because you've won at those locations in one of the previous rounds. So you cannot select those locations again and this makes sense because for balancing reasons so that you don't choose the easy locations over and over again. But you also have to remember that the objective locations and the spawn locations share the same list. So if a location is greyed out, that might actually impact your tactics because it will impact the locations where you want to spawn right away. Another mistake I often see from new players is when they only rely on personal gadgets, especially the body armor. Although it helps reduce the damage per projectile to the chest, it is not protecting your head, so headshots from any weapon will basically lead to an instant death. Although it certainly helps keep you alive against attackers who might not be good enough at aiming for the head right away, it does not really help your team enough, especially if you want to rely on tactics to win, which is ideally what you would do since that's what the game is all about, really. If you compare the benefits of the body armor compared to the other gadgets, it doesn't really bring much to the table for the rest of your team. C4 charges are more useful to block access to locations and kill the riot shields, frag grenades as well, spy cameras help getting valuable information all the time, it just doesn't really help the team enough if you just take the body armor. Also, with the new inventory system that will be coming with Operation Magna in August 2021, you will have the ability to loot dead teammates. You will be able to take their weapons, uh, their ammo, and some of their gadgets as well. And I'm pretty sure that the body armor is not going to be something that you will be able to take and use. So again, not really useful to the rest of your team. 
So don't rely only on the body armor. Think about how other gadgets can be more useful for the rest of your team for you to win the round. Last but not least, team placement. I often see a lot of people spawning all together at the same location and sticking together for the entire round. While on paper this sounds exciting and kind of what the game wants you to do, sometimes it's actually pretty bad and very dangerous because on some maps it's so close quarter that a couple of frag grenades will just wipe your entire team very quickly. And don't get me wrong, I think it is important to have enough people close to the objective to protect it, but you don't need your entire team to be there and spawn at the same location. There are many, many benefits in splitting your team in little groups and have a few team members maybe spawning at different levels of the map. For instance, you could have some of your team members controlling the access points to the floors. Controlling the stairs on Terror House is a good example of that because you could prevent attackers from accessing the objective from any levels via the stairs. It's also pretty useful to split your team and have one or two team members protecting the breaker switch, which is a vital part of most attackers' tactics. On maps like Hotel Trouble or Embassy Raid, the breaker switch is pretty remote from most objective locations and sometimes a bit too easy for attackers to reach, especially on Hotel Trouble. So if you all spawn and stay at the same location, you are just basically making it really easy for attackers to reach the objective, since they don't have to worry about clearing the other floors, they don't have to worry about getting flanked, they don't really have to check all the corners, and they don't have to worry about not being able to use the breaker switch and really just you know use a couple of frag grenades to neutralize the entire defending team. So don't box yourself in. Try to find the right balance. Try to split your team in ways that let you have one or two very close to the objective, a couple more around the access points, and maybe one remote protecting the breaker switch. And so those are the three most common mistakes that I see a lot of new players make in Zero Hour. Actually, I also see more experienced players making those mistakes. They are not very hard to avoid and it will make a huge difference if 1. You are aware of them, especially if you make them yourself and 2. You and the rest of your team try to avoid them. I think it's pretty hard to have no one, not a single player making mistakes 1 and or 2 in your team, especially when playing with randoms. But a bit of communication usually helps teach new players. You have to talk during the loadout phase and you have to ask people to click on specific objective locations to ensure the game does not pick the worst option for you. And you need to encourage players to try other gadgets as well, instead of having them go for the body armor all the time. I am afraid using a microphone is kind of the only reliable option we have for that right now and even once Operation Magna is released, I don't think we will be able to use the voice commands in the loadout phase. You can still type in the chat, but it would take you longer. But in any case, talk. Talk to your team, communicate, suggest tactics, share ideas, educate and teach players how to avoid those mistakes. And so that's it for this zero hour video. I hope you enjoyed it, I hope you learned something. And if you did, please consider leaving a like and to subscribe to support the channel. I'm Scott Hot Rod, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video.